New York City just put a cap on Uber and Lyft drivers, and I say they're addressing a problem that doesn't even exist. Let's talk about it. Welcome everyone, Mark here from Uber Hints, and you heard right. New York City just voted to cap Uber and Lyft drivers. In essence, what they're going to do is not issue any more licenses, not let new drivers get into the game. And according to statistics, if things keep going the way they are, every year 25% of rideshare drivers drop out. So what they're trying to do is allow through attrition the number of drivers to get lower and lower. Now, in this story, there are a lot of numbers, so rather than try to memorize them, I'm just going to look off screen here and share some of the numbers with you. And then I'm going to tell you why I think this is just a big, fat, so what? They're wasting their time, and they are just trying to perpetuate an archaic system. So, what it says here, about 8,000 or 80,000 vehicles are currently used for so-called ride sharing. This is off of the uh, Fortune website. They complete 17 million rides a month. The city licenses for street hailing is just under 14,000 yellow cabs and fewer than 4,000 green taxis, which can't pick up fares in the lower two thirds of Manhattan. So they really, really manage the number of cabs in New York and they have since about the 1940s, which is when I believe the medallion system started. You know my feelings on the medallion system. I am not going to uh, continue to reiterate them here. It's just, it was a system that got out of control. If they wanted to manage the number of cabs, they didn't have to allow private transference of the medallions. When someone decided not to drive any longer or their company went out of business or whatever the case might be, they turn their medallion back over to the city who then releases it to another individual. There's no reasons medallions had to get to be a million dollars or whatever outrageous prices they were. And when people complain about that, well, I invested my money, boo frickin' who? You know what? That's your fault. You're the one that chose to make that choice. It's sort of like if I buy a house on spec. Oh my goodness, I bought that house and now the market crashed. Please, government, help me. No, that is not the way the world should work. Someone made a choice and sometimes, hey, circumstances change, but let's go on. So uh, the city council voted to require, first of all, they, they voted to require a minimum wage for drivers. They haven't established what that minimum uh, wage is going to be. And they say it's only going to apply to businesses, companies, services that dispatch 10,000 rides a day. So um, that's a lot of rides, but New York is a big city. Uh, while they don't know what that dollar amount is going to be, they want to get $17.22 an hour. You might be saying that's great. Eh, let's go on. It says uh, the freeze may result in fewer vehicles on the road. It talks about the 25% attrition rate. Now here's the flip side of it. People argue that, in, now I don't live in New York. I've been to New York a lot, but I don't live in New York, so I can't attest to this. These are just reports and things I hear. Uh, first of all, taxis will not go to areas that are perceived as undesirable areas and that it's difficult to get a taxi in many cases if you um, are of an apparent ethnicity. You know, they, they talk about black men have a difficult time getting a cab, people of Hispanic origin. So I, I don't know. But if that's the case, maybe that's a pretty good case for having ride share. My big point is, my thing is that, have you ever been in a New York City cab? They are the most disgusting places on earth. There's dirt and filth and cigarette butts and torn upholstery and they smell and it looks like somebody's been urinating on the seat. Why do you think they're losing business? And what they want to do is artificially continue that business with their substandard service. I want to get in a nice, clean, up-to-date modern Uber vehicle. And I wish that the city would think about letting this play out for a while. Now, I know the argument, I know what you're gonna be saying, but we can't make a living wage, so what? You know, everything isn't designed to be a living wage and everything doesn't have to be. Maybe the taxi cab has run its course. You know, it's been 100 plus years that there have been 
motorized cabs in New York. They started with electric vehicles that didn't do so well because they were too expensive. And, and so the electric vehicles died out very quickly in the early part of the last century. And yeah, you didn't know that, did you? But guess what? It was due to competition and internal combustion engine vehicles being able to do a better job. Boy, that is a novel concept, isn't it? Another industry or another technology moving in and taking over because they can do a better job. Now, I understand you bought the medallion, but you know, that's not my fault. It certainly isn't drivers and riders' faults. I like Uber when I'm in New York because we can get an Uber car pretty quickly. Now, I know I said one incident, someone canceled on me, I had to wait longer, but for the most part, when I order an Uber when I'm in New York, it comes really, really fast. And taxis, that I, taxis are really subpar. They're substandard. Um, the taxi drivers are crude. They're, they're uh, unruly. You know, you hear, ta- I, I have never heard an Uber driver roll down the window and start swearing and cussing. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I see that all the time in New York. If you watch my, I think it's on my Sardis when I'm having dinner at Sardis, New York, and I'm kind of laughing because I'm walking down the street and you can hear these cab drivers and bus drivers just cursing each other out. And you know, that is not a good experience. For some people, it's frightening. And what's wrong with letting a new industry play out? If it's not a living wage, people aren't gonna do it forever. Why do you think there's a 25% attrition rate? You know, like I said, we are moving into a new, a new time, it's a new age. Maybe the time of making a living by driving a car in New York City is gone. That's okay. It's all right for people to do other things. There are a lot of jobs out in the world. It's all right for people to ride share as a sideline, as a side income. Maybe it would work better because I can get my rides quickly. I. I don't understand why they're trying to artificially prop up the taxi industry. It's an industry that's losing for a reason. It's, it's, it's losing for a reason. What's the reason? Is it cheaper rates? Is it cleaner vehicles? Is it better, quicker service? Is it more polite drivers? Probably a combination of all that, but taxis are losing for a reason. And instead of stepping up to the plate, and you know, going head to head the competition, they are looking to have legislation change it. I think it's wrong. I know that I'm gonna get pushback on this, but I think it's wrong. At times, just let the marketplace work it out. And I know a lot of you say Uber are thieves, Uber are con people, Uber does this. I'm not gonna defend Uber, but if that were really the case, the solution is really simple. Stop driving. Uber cannot exist if it doesn't have drivers, right? So, but there are some of us, and I'm one of them, that I found a way to make this be profitable. I just drove today. Um, I didn't track all my hours right now. You know, I, I could look real easy on the app, but the problem is the app is a little misleading for the way I drive. But anyways, I was out for um, three segments. I went out a little in the morning, took my mid-morning break in the afternoon. Um, I drove over the from uh, just before noon hour to a little after, and then I drove during the rush. And was there a terrible traffic jam today? And um, I made two hundred and two dollars in some sense. That's pretty good. So there is a way to make money. And I just uh, I don't know this whole idea of getting so up in arms because the world is changing. What if they did that with woodworkers? You know, 120 years ago, everything was made out of wood and then the plastic industry came. What if they said, I'm sorry, we got to cap plastics. We cannot let that beast into our house. Uh, you, you know, we're not going to let the plastic, the, the nose of the plastic camel start working its way into your tent. Before you know it, we're sleeping with the camel. Well, no, it, you know, it, what happened is largely the uh, skilled woodworker became a hobby trade. And some of us will still say, hey, I like that craftsmanship. I'll still buy from the skilled woodworker. Others say, no, I'll take the molded plastic chair. I don't care. 
It's the way the world works. What do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? I'd love to hear your comments down below as always. I love it when you share the videos, give me the thumbs up, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm Mark with Uber Hints.